I'm the man who's going to take down Kate Lee and Tilly Devine, and you're going to help me. Nobody pushes me around. I haven't even started to push yet. We got rid of your mate, Squizzy Taylor, and we can get rid of you. Judge says Kate Lee must be the worst woman in Sydney. No mention of Tilly Devine. You're a gangster, aren't you? Say so you are. Gives you a thrill, does it? I've never met anyone like you. I know from my contacts down south, you're a serious fella. I just thought maybe we can do some good for each other. See, I don't think I need a fancy man like you, Phil. Oh, sorry, Mr. Braun. Oh, bloody heck. I'd sooner cut my own heart out. You ever had a razor cut? Bleeding never stops. These things, one stroke light as a feather, you can open a man's face to the bone. What can a light be visible? You're sending a message, darling, this is not a lawless town. Right? Off you go. Be careful, won't you? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know what to do without you. George Wallace. G'day, Sid. You want a Donnybrook? That's not exactly what we had in mind. his grand plan to drive Tilly and Kate out of business. He'd attacked the toughest man in Sydney, leaving a calling card that was violent and bloody and impossible to ignore. Don't give for free nothing you can charge for. Don't flash your bloomers, neither. Hello, Kelly. Coming in to spend your dosh. Where's your brother? You ain't here? that clam open good and proper jack had pressed just that bit harder there'd be one less kelly thing than oxygen <laughs> pressed as hard as i wanted him to but won't he come after you kick a kelly very bloody disappointed if the coot don't oblige <laughs> with a bit of payback and when <laughs> kelly or his brother or their mates have a go i'll cut them up and send them back out again as me messengers and if they want to have another go I'll cut them again. Yeah. <laughs> They're thick enough to have another go. I'll cut them again. Yeah. Any of them. I'll cut them. And I'll keep on cutting until Kate Lee, Tilly Devine, Phil the Jew Jess, the whole bang lot of them get me message. Look at that loose tooth out. Long last. Think you can find him a happening? You know I'm the tooth fairy. What are you doing? 
Uh, you lost a button. Uh, I can match it. So who was it, Sid? Couldn't say. Tall, short, fair, dark. Couldn't say. Razor. Unusual weapon. Gave the forks of this barber once. Maybe he's getting square. Enough, Kelly. Tilly Devane and Kate Lee have been rowing for years, and no one's ever taken a cutthroat to a man before. What if you just stood over one drunk too many? I'm not being a copper for you. I'm not saying a thing. Mom. Mom, the cow's willing. Irene. We'll have the range out. Assault certainly made the victim's blood flow. His attacker's weapon was not a pistol or cosh. So this correspondent was told an ordinary folding razor. Oh, a razor. It's a good idea. You should carry one, Jim. You too, Frank. I'm a gunman, Tilly, not a razorman. We don't get six months in Long Bay jail for carrying a razor. Slash and kick at Kelly. This cave Norman Bruno won't have his wits about him. He puts his filthy mitts on our business. I'll bloody take to him with a bloody razor in me arm. Now you put an eye out. Uh, ain't them the boys who slash Kelly? Get your hand off it, Sonny. Shut your eyes. Put out your hand. Shrapnel. Present from Pozier. Medic dug it out and oh, I kept it. Good luck, child. And look at that bike again. <laughs> Fallen comrades, lest we forget. Start something around here. You gotta finish it. Melbourne. No weapons. Go ahead. See how far you get. Like everyone else, Norman Bruin had been expecting reprisals. They were part of his plan. But he'd imagined a dark alley and a razor in his hand. He'd imagined winning, 
Imagine scaring Kate and Tilly even further. What he got was a classic Sydney Packarding, after Packard, the make of boot the gangsters favoured. The assault was witnessed by a dozen sly imbibers, yet police say none could or would identify the men responsible. The chief victim, Mr Norman Brune, is the reputed leader of the worst gang of thugs on the street. But Mrs Kate Lee, a personage sometimes described as the Queen of the Underworld, told this correspondent that though she had heard Mr Brune's name in passing, she thought him of no consequence. Ah. Uh, no. Clear off. All of you. Baby Ray has a dog. The dog is lit, lit. Little. The dog is little. You keep practicing, Casey. Show up all them posh kids, eh? Baby Ray has a dog. The dog is little. No. Maybe you should get out of this business you're in. Don't start. I'm lying here and you're having a go at how I bring in a bloody urn. Language, love. You're good enough to eat, don't you? The boys aren't in bloody rags, are they? Everything I do is for you and the boys. I came up here to get us a better life, and that's what I'm gonna do. A wise man would have given up and gone back to Melbourne. But for Norman Brun, there was no going back. On the contrary, he went on and on, pushing harder and closer to Tilly and Kate. His strategy was simple. He was going to panic them into leaving, scare them into yielding. After all, they were only a couple of women. How much calculated terror could they take? The third target of Norman's standover campaign was Phil Jeffs and his two-up schools. They were a handy and inexhaustible little earner. You came to St. Vincent's. In those heady bygone days, a weapon of terror cost just a few pence. Suddenly, every street hood and standover wannabe in the city was carrying a Bengal blade and using it. Norman Bruin had ushered in the era 
of the Razor Gangs. More Razor attacks, straight to running red. Bringing in truth, more Razor attacks, straight to running red. As for the police, well, Blind Freddy could see there was a war on. But figuring out the who's, why's and wherefores, well, that required someone actually opening their mouth. So who's Blind Zart then? That yours, Ernest Wilson? Not yours, I hope, Mr. Jeffs. No, it's not blood, Inspector. My clumsy associate here spilled a pot of paint. What's going on? Nothing. The fuck is going on? Nothing. Do you kiss your mother with that mouth? Well, you're a sensible woman, Kate. Something nasty's brewing. Besides your watered down whiskey. I don't have water me whiskey. Well, whatever this is, it's getting out of hand. Is it Jeff's? The Divines, are you and Tilly feuding again? Or have you ladies pitched in together? Decided you'll slash your way through the competition. <laughs> Bill, I know that you've got a job to do, but there's three things that you need to know. One, I don't water me whiskey. Two, I've always looked after me own. And three, I can boot Tilly Devine a bigger distance than I trust her pitching with anyone. I don't understand why you'd think of me and her in the same breath. Selling illicit liquor, peddling dope, ruining young girls' lives. No one could say I've done terrible things like Kate Lee. Uh, Mrs. Devane, I'm trying to help you here. Uh, Jeff's you, Kate Lee. Someone's targeting you because you all trade in the same general area. Listen, Mackie, I wouldn't let my dog shit in the same fucking area as Kate fucking Lee. Now fuck off out me ass. I've got shit to do. Go on. Turn around. Turn around. Now we go next, Dad. Of course you can. Keep peddling. Keep peddling. I think Prince of Wales had one just like it. Peddled it round Windsor Castle. Soon I'll buy us a place in the sun. Ruba, maybe. Lane Cove. Some nice new clothes. Silk stockings. <laughs> Electric sewing machine. Some books for the boys. Norman Bruin had handpicked his gang with an eye to diversity. Snowy Cutmore was a vicious loose cannon. George Wallace was a loyal attack dog, while Razor Jack Hayes, well, he brought certain technical skills. And you could never be sure where the gang would strike next. Being blown up. Can't say I blame him. Oh, yeah, those two blokes selling your snow up on Oxford Street. Gone back to the pie factory. Probably worried about their throats getting slashed. Geez, thanks for your insight, May. Barney is here. Don't be so familiar. He's Mr. Dalton to you. <laughs> Where you been? A lot of different spuds. Ran from Cleveland Street down Cran to the wharfs. 
Do you sprints? Anyone the groggeries? Uh, yeah, yeah, sprints with that. Mark, can I have a scone? Yeah, try the this Nah, no, so I'll bring a scan off. Hey, what about Kipat uh, Street, Max? Mark, can I have a scone? Yeah, a no, you chance. can't spoil your figure. Oh, you know. All that Will you just <laughs> stop talking football? Actually, all of you is just get out of me kitchen. Go on, piss off. Not you. <laughs> We need more blades. He makes sure that Greg, Octopus, Barney, he makes sure all the boys carry him. If that's what you want. I don't want... I don't want to stoop to Norman Breen's filthy level, but you have to retaliate first. You do have a friend in a high place. Maybe he could help. <laughs> I don't think the Lord's going to piss Breen off for me, no matter how hard I pray. I was thinking of a more earthly power. So Norman Brown's behind this mayhem. My new jests of the veins. They've all been turning the other cheek. You wanted someone to tell you what's what, Norman Brown. That's what. Nah, go out and arrest him. Now your men are you prepared to stand in court, swear it was Brown who cut him. Nah. St. Vincent's treated 22 razor victims this past month. One lad lost an ear. Another had a sniffer locked off. Not one of them would say how they came to be hurt. Folk are scared of Brune and his droves. And they're scared of you and yours and Jess and the Divines. Pains me to say this, but not one of you's in line for the sainthood. Everything was just fine before Brune swanned up from Melbourne. Until one of you lot breaks your precious code of silence. There's precious little I can do about it. Turn over a place. A couple of days it opens up again. Making next to no boodle. Told you these Sydney shielders were pushovers. They're all dosh and muscle. No, this is a bull, Norm. We should just... <laughs> Shut up. Show some balls and fix the fish. Shut up, you can Mr. Brown. Inspector Mackay, Darlinghurst Police. I believe you've already had the pleasure of Detective Sergeant Wickham's acquaintance. Conducting a search for illegal weapons under Section 4.1 of the Pistol Licensing Act, 1927. Interesting. That's not a pistol. Here's a puzzle of Detective Wickham. Why would a man carry a razor in his pocket when he pays another man to shave? It's not illegal. Get him. You want to watch out, Mr. Brown? Making a name for yourself. Yeah? Aye. Which means we'll be keeping a nice close eye on you. <laughs> Luigi, guess half a dozen more of your best Bengals, will ya? <laughs> <laughs> Never would have guessed. What do you want, George? I want your wallet, Wally. Wallet, Wally, wallet, Wally. <laughs> 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 
It wasn't his face or even his arm. Barney Dalton was one of the most popular rugby league players of his era. But not after a severed Achilles tendon. Not after Norman Brun. Ma? Oh, that's for Barney and Wally. Is that from that cake tin? The Jew's here. Hey? Bill the Jew? Here in our house. Morning. How's your boys? Barney will walk with limp for the rest of his days, and Wally, well, he's not winning any beauty pageants. <laughs> but he was an oil painter to begin with. You know, I knew Broom was a bastard, but this, this was a real bastard act. Well, you know what his game is, don't you? He's gonna go through all our people till he gets to us. You, me, Tilly. Yeah, well, I'm not scared of him. He's welcome to the Cockney slag. Hey, if he takes out just one of us, he's gonna be unstoppable. Every hood in this city is going to be our then to join his push. Broom is changing the rules. We've got to change with it. How? You said a private meeting of important personages. So what the fuck is we've she got doing there? Bear blood aside. Look, I know it's toilsome, but we've got a common problem here. There's only one thing common in here. Right. So Broom's the problem. We killed the slasher. Problem solved. A couple of bullets. You want to bring every copper in Sydney down on us? They got a thing about murders. They hang you for it. Oh, maybe you could pull the trigger. Do us all a favour. Miss Lee does have a point. Look, we're all suffering the slings and arrows of an outrageous <coughs> loss of fortune thanks to this broom. Your customers are only going to stay away in wardrobes if they think they're going to meet their maker if they come up this way. You got an idea, do you, Jeffs? Yeah, we scare them off. Shoot them in the knee. Both knees. Then we drive him to a railway station, put a sign around his neck, return to Melbourne. Just kill him. It's for the best. Jim? Uh, got a point, Till. Our boy Frank Green will do the shooting. <laughs> the little gunman. <laughs> well, here he's tops against chandeliers. Not so flash against the little... Anything we suggest, she poo-poos! My boy Greg Gaffney's your bloke. He's got guts. <sighs> Spends his time carousing at your depraved groggeries. You ever heard of pots and kettles? It really upsets me to be in your proximity. It took a while, but eventually the Council of War thrashed out a plan to kneecap Norman. Big Jim Devine would choose the gun, Kate Lee would provide the gunman, and Phil Jeff's boys, the Kelly brothers, they were to be the backup plan. Norman Bruin was problem solved. But then Tilly Devine went home, hatched her own grand plan and kept it all to herself. You want me to shoot Norman Bruin? Yeah. Did the job Kate Lee's too chicken to see done proper. Kill him, eh? Jeez, well, yeah, sure thing. I'm your gunman. I can do it. Do it like that. You pay me, right? For... <clears throat> 20 quid. Didn't Jim agree to just nobble him? Ah, oh, Jimmy's not thinking straight. As soon as he sees the headline, broom dead, he'll know my way was best. You're the gunman, all right, you Frankie? You want the street time in Greg Gaffney's name? You want him called the gunman, or you? I'll fix him for you, Tilly.
fellas in here, lad. Can I please have a sherry? <laughs> All right, just as well. You don't need that. Pretty as a picture already. You're going to get me into trouble, little gunman. By all this, city. You know, he's married. A couple of kids. <laughs> I don't know what you see in him. He's old and he's from Melbourne. He's the best. He's the best. Not gonna happen, Frank. Nelly, Nelly. I'll pay you. Keithy. New shape. Nell has the doll on her lap. She will put her doll in the cot. Where'd you get that? Working. Girl. Sometimes Wall well gets lucky. And more often than not, it's just her and her pug ugly daughter. <laughs> k k k k tees are ripe for the picking. But, pick our moment, blow the door. Scare the daylights out of her living tits. She'll think her number's up. <laughs> <laughs> I like my idea better. Just kill Kate and Telly. You need me to spell it out for you again, Snow. You need me to remind you how well-known Kate and Telly are. How killing him be the act of a short-sighted galoot who didn't value his neck? You not got that. I got it. You sure? Seems there's an itch in your tax, you're just longing to scratch. I'm sweet. You're the one letting the bee go on. Snowy Cutmore had yet another plan. He was going to kill his boss and take over the gang. But he'd have to join a queue of people wanting to do Norman Brunham that night. Give him a pack outing from me. Let's go. And it was a long queue. Rest when the job's done. What's going on? Nothing. Well, you're still dirty about Kate Lee. 
The woman just raised a voice and you killed us. Right the lunch. And you not. Just trying to keep the cops off our backs. You and me will swing past Lee's joints. Whatever you say, Norm. Meet up later. Come on, Georgie Porgy. How come you get a bonzer nickname like Razor Jack and I get Georgie Porgy? Oi, Grandpa. Matt's Cafe, mate. First, eh? She'll keep. You're the boss. Are uh, you gents be wanting me further? Yeah, wait. Push off, mate. Free will, isn't it? Push off. Bruin. Help. Shot. This guy, you'll be right. Inspector Mackay. You remember me? I won't show for anyone. Oh, come on, Norman. I show you. I won't be a copper. You got nothing to lose, mate. I do the right thing. Fuck. Oh, Mr. Brunt. Oh, you heard him. My husband's got nothing to say. Mrs. 
Did he say anything? Did he, uh, did he tell you who shot him? No, he didn't. I wouldn't tell you if he had. He's dead. That wasn't the plan. Yeah, it wasn't me, Kate. I never even got the chance. Well, who? Hmm? Who killed him? We only caught a glimpse. I think it was Frank Green. Tilly fucking divine. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell to see more murder, mystery and mayhem. Until next time.